So we are now doing approximation algorithms. Oh, by the way, approximation algorithms is, is um, one of the main topics in theoretical computer science. All the time, all the time, yeah. Approximation algorithms, and we have two 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 important requirements. Number one is uh, uh, it runs quickly. So uh, it should be a polynomial computation. It it should should run quickly. And the guaranteed approximation ratio. And approximation ratio is defined by Uh, you know, it, it's very naturally defined. That means uh, it's a ratio between algorithm cost over optimal cost. Okay. The first example I told you is pin packing. Uh, we are given items, we are given items that is just the numbers. So 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.12, 0 0.03, 0. Uh, I don't know, uh, 2.1, 0 0.2. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, items we are given. And uh, our task is to, to to put all items, to put all items into the bins of size one. And I'll show you a uh, fast fit. Fast fit algorithm. That is just, you know, just, it's a pretty easy algorithm. So take this one, now okay, this bin's available. Uh, this is a fast bin, new bin. And the button five, so again, we can use this bin. Then 0 0.6 does not fit. So we use a new bin, 0 0.6. And this one, OK, this is important. So now we, are, we come to this guy. Then we look at the bin from left to right. And we use the first bin, which is available. That means this bin, we can use this bin. So 0 0.12 and 0 0.003 is still using this bin. Okay? and 0 0.21 and 0 0.2. So first fit goes like this. Okay. And our theorem, our theorem says first fit Okay. Our theorem says uh, first fit has an approximation ratio of at most uh, 2.0. And I also uh, told you that uh, we do have a better algorithm that is appro uh, whose approximation ratio is uh, uh, something like 1.7. But the uh, proof for the better algorithms is pretty complicated and difficult. Okay. And also, I gave you a bad example. Bad example for first, first feet. That is actually, you know, something like a one point, I don't remember, six, one point six seven. 
I don't remember. Uh, but uh, it's something like, uh, you know, th 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 that uh, uh, analysis of fast fit 2.0, 2.0 is not that bad. Not that bad. Actually, there is an, there is an instant, there is an example of uh, input uh, which actually needs something like, like 1.67 uh, more beans. More beans are optimal. OK. Now, we are going to a new example. Exa example two. Uh, that is set come. Instance input is Okay, input uh, has twice. Uh, no, no, input has two things. One is uh, u, is a ground set. This is not so important. It's not so important. Just a set of uh, n elements. Just a set of n elements. Uh, important uh, input is here. We have m subsets, m subsets of u. Okay. Oh, this is important. This is not so important. This is just a set of n elements. So this, uh, these sets. S1, S2, SM are really important. Problem is select select K, sub K sets from M sets. We have M sub subsets. Select K ones out of uh, M uh, candidates such that the union is exactly the ground set. OK. And I'll go minimize. The number of uh, selected sets minimize the number of selected sets. That means the number uh, minimize this this number k. Okay. Example. Example. Is here. Okay. Well, this is a simple example. A uh, ground set U has seven elements, and we have uh, six subsets. And your task is to pick some subsets whose union is whose union includes everything. One through seven. How maybe uh, you already have uh, some answer? 
Oh, maybe, um, maybe you have some answer. But anyway, what I'm going to, I'm going to prove is this term. Um, the algorithm called greedy has an approximation ratio of at most one plus log n. This base is a natural, natural base, log n. Okay. So what I'm going to prove is this term. What is greedy? What is greedy? Greedy is, you know, it's uh, exactly, uh, you know, as it is. So, uh, uh, let me ask this question. What would be, what would you, would you like to select first in this example? Which subset would you like to select first? What? I'm sorry? No, 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 no. For the, for the, for the first step. First step. No, no, the I, I, the, my, my question is very simple. For the first selection, which one would you like to select? For the first selection? Uh, exactly, exactly. Namely, S1. Yes, that is the most natural selection. If you, 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 you select S1, you can cover four. But if you select other, another, other, 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 other subset, then you can cover at least, at most three. So S1 is obviously better. That is greedy. That is greedy. OK? So as you select S1. Now you already covered 1, 4, 5, 7. Now my question. For the second selection, what would you select? Which would you select? Notice already 1 is gone. Four is gone, five is gone, seven is gone. What would you, would you select for the second time, for the second step? The same idea, the same idea as before. If you, if you select this one, then you can cover, you can cover one new element. OK? Then what, what is what is what is the answer? Okay, so so uh, S three exactly. If you select this one, then you can cover new two new ones, two and six. But for all the other ones, for example, this you can only cover one new thing. All the other can cover one. But this S3 can cover two. This is exactly the greedy, the greedy algorithm. So each time, you just select the subset which can cover the most, you know, uncovered elements. OK? Very natural algorithm. Very natural algorithm. So this very natural algorithm has an approximation of uh, at most Something like log n. So importantly, this is not constant. Ah, not so good. Approximation ratio, but it's log n. So it's not a constant. Hmm. But uh, I don't prove. This is a quite, quite difficult theory, but uh, this log n is almost optimal. It's almost optimal. There's no other, no better algorithm, uh, essentially speaking. Proof.
uh, yeah, proof is uh, simple, but uh, uh <laughs> yeah, you need to be careful. Okay. Okay, so suppose that we are given, we fix, we fix some sequence, some ex execution, se execution sequence of uh, algorithm greedy. Okay, so for example, in this case, you know, you fa first select S1, you second select S2, S3, and you, you third select, I don't know, uh, one, two, three, ah, S S2, for example. So in this case, the uh, execution, execution sequence of a uh, greedy is S1, S2, and uh, no, S3, and uh, maybe S5. S5, S3, both are okay. So this is uh, some uh, specific execution sequence of uh, uh, greedy. Now, now, define. Okay, now define the price of each item as a follows. For example, this is your first choice, SI1. This is your first choice, SI, SI1 covers five items. For example, for example, uh, five items, say, I don't know, um, uh, okay, uh, three, uh, five, uh, seven, uh, nine, uh, ten. Okay. Then um, we give a price. We give a price to each item. So we get price. That is one fifth. One fifth. Okay. The idea is one subset. Will it cost you one dollar. Okay. We choose one subset. You, 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 you have to pay one dollar, okay? You, you take one subset by paying one dollar. That means, you know, by paying one dollar, you can get five items, five items, right? So that's why it's, uh, these items, is the price is one fifth, 20 cents, okay? You, you, know, it's, uh, you, 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 you select three, you select three subset, 
you sell three, three services, that means you paid three dollars. Okay? And for the first for the first uh, subset, you can get four items. That means each item, you know, the price of each item is a uh, quarter. Okay, that is the idea. That is the idea. Okay, so the idea is. Uh, So this is the idea. You pay one dollar for each subset. That means those guys, are, you know, prices of those guys are one fifth. Okay. Now, suppose that it's uh, Now, for the second step, uh, your, your subset covers five items again, and the third subset covers three items, and so on and so forth. This is a sequence of uh, uh, greedy. Now, prices of each element is for the first, uh, you know, for the first uh, subset. One fifth. Okay. So this is uh, for the first select selection, and for the second selection again, each item has a price of one fifth. Okay. This is for the for second uh, second subset. For the third su subset, you can cover cover only three. That means the price is one third. And this is the price sequence. The price sequence. Okay. We have two important things. Now we got we got this price sequence. Okay. You fix, you fix the the the, you know the procedure, the execution sequence of uh, your algorithm greedy. Then you can define prices of the items like this. Then what is your cost? What is your your cost? Your cost is of course the sum of prices. Okay. This is a, this is a, you pay one dollar for, for this subset, you pay one dollar this subset, you pay one dollar this subset, and so on and so forth. That means your cost is, is exactly the sum of prices. Okay, the cost of the, alg the algorithm is exactly the sum of prices. Also, This is a this is a price sequence. This is a price sequence of uh, greedy. It's a price sequence of greedy. But for any algorithm, not only for greedy, greedy, but also for any algorithm, we can define such a sequence of prices. 
What is such a sequence? What is such a sequence? Such a sequence means, you know, the, the, the prices are not decreasing. This is important. Or, or roughly speaking, it's increasing. The price is increasing. Okay. So most important, the price is not decreasing, or you know, roughly speaking, the price sequence is increasing. Increasing. This is, of course, you know, it's a trivial for greedy, but for any algorithm, for any algorithm, just by changing the selection of uh, selection of uh, uh, subsets, you can define such a non-decreasing uh, price sequence. Okay. Now, Now the price of item X. What is item X? Item X is uh, X is here, exactly L plus first uh, element in this sequence, in that sequence. Just L plus, L, L plus first segment. The first segment of the remaining N minus L elements, the price of X. What is the price of X? Now, important fact. is that ah. oh, this is a key, key lemma, the key lemma. The, the price of x is at most the optimal cost divided by n minus l. n minus l is the number of remaining element. OK, why? Uh, Suppose that the price of x is p. The price of x is p. Then Okay. 
So you need to understand this, this uh, sequence of uh, implication. Suppose that the price of x is p. p. Then, for any algorithm, the price of x is at least p. Because, OK, OK. Now, suppose that this is, a, this is a your choice. This is a your new choice, OK? Actually, no, this is a little bit uh, you know, kind of, uh, subtle. But uh, suppose that this is a, your, the timing of your new choice. Okay. Remember, okay, uh, your algorithm is greedy. Your algorithm is greedy. That means you select a subset which can cover you know, most elements. Okay. That means if the price of x is p, for any algorithm, the price of x is also p or larger, right? Because the algorithm is greedy. That means the price of x is, a, for any algorithm, price of x is p. For any algorithm, you know, it needs at least the cost p times remaining elements. OK? Then, You know, it is a, we, we can imply a simple contradiction. If the price of x is, you know, more than this value, more than this value, then any algorithm is more than, more than, you know, okay, so this value multiplied by n minus l is opt. So any algorithm needs more than opt. That is a contradiction. Of course, the opt needs. <laughs> OK, there is a best uh, there is a algorithm that is opt, needs opt. OK? So this is a contradiction. That's why uh, this fact is correct. This fact is true. OK? Uh, now, it's pretty easy. Now it's it's uh, the remaining thing is quite easy. Just uh, using this fact, the cost of greedy is uh, as I said, it's it's a sum of prices. The first price is opt opt divided by n divided by n. The second price is opt divided by by n minus one and so on and so forth. That means um, you should know this, uh, this formula. You should know the formula. Okay, the value of uh, this sum, this sequence, uh, the value of this uh, uh, sequence of sum is uh, log n plus 1. Log n plus 1. If you don't know this, uh, this formula, then just uh, visit your, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure, but uh, if you remember, uh, something like this. I don't know. So one plus uh, one half plus one third plus plus one n is something like I don't know. Uh, 
maybe I don't know. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm not so I'm not so familiar with this kind of things. Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is log n. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe this is uh, some some kind of idea. But uh, uh, please visit some, some web pages for formulas, mathematical formulas. Then this is one of the very popular formula. OK? So this is uh, just log n. OK, we are done. Maybe, maybe. I should erase this. So this is a uh, videotaped. <laughs> so the following uh, bad example. That is a. Uh, Okay, so we have, uh, I don't know, 15 uh, and 15, 15, 15, 30, 30 elements. No, 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 no. Uh, 30? Yes, 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 yes. We have 30 elements. And the subset is, uh, this is one subset. From the subset, S1, S2, and also this subset, S3, S4, S5, S6. Yeah. We have 30 elements, and the uh, subset, subset look like this. What is optimal solution? Of course, S1 and S2. OK? It's optimal solution. But what is greedy? What is greedy? Greedy first selects S3. OK? Because it covers 16 elements, better than 15. Now, what is next? Next, select S4, because this is 8. But the remaining thing is uh, 7. So again, you know, greedy select S4. And S5 and S6. Means opt You understand? Is it okay? Or we can extend this, uh, this uh, you know, example. Extend. So this uh, always opt is two. Opt is always two. The next one is, uh, you know, that, uh, you add 16 elements, 16 elements, then 32 elements, 32 elements, or just uh, extend this example. Then the opt is always two, but greedy increases like log n. Ah. That means the approximation ratio is something like log n. Not exactly log n, but uh, something like log n. Yeah. Log n over two. Right? Yeah, so this is a bad example for greedy. So this analysis is not that bad, not that bad. OK, now, example three.
The third example is a very famous one that is called the traveling sales salesman or traveling salesperson problem, TSP. Uh, what is TSP? TSP, we are given a graph. We are given a graph with edge weight. Uh, edge weight. Something is missing. It's nice. Edge weight. So edge weight means something like a distance, like a distance between between two two vertices. Okay. And our goal, our problems, is to find a cycle, a cycle in this graph. The cycle which visits all, all, all but vertices exactly once, exactly once. So, for example, for example, uh, this is a. OK, this is uh, one possible solution. Just, you know, a cycle which visits all vertices exactly once. Exactly once. What is the cost of this uh, cycle? Of course, the cost of the, the, the sum of the cost of the edges. OK? And your goal is, of course, to find the uh, to find the cheapest cycle, you know, shortest cycle. Uh, I don't know if this is <laughs> actually, uh, you know, the optimal, optimal solution or not, but uh, probably yes. Because, for example, you know, this part, uh, in, uh, in this part, you can change by these two edges, okay? So instead of those, those two edges, you can also se select this edge, these two edges. But you know, the sum of course is uh, the, this one, this one is three plus five is eight. But uh, the, the two edges, seven plus three is 10. So if you change this uh, like this, then the cost increases. I don't know if this is exactly the, the, the minimum, minimum uh, answer, but uh, Probably it's yes. Okay. Probably this. Uh, probably you know this problem P because uh, it's a very famous problem. Ah, so what is what is a problem? Oh, I'm sorry. So our input is a graph with, uh, with edge weight. And problem, uh, find. Find the sequence, find the sequence of vertices uh, 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 find the sequence of all vertices, all vertices. That means permutation. Permutation of vertices, uh,
find out permutation of vertices such that there are edges between each of them, between each of them, and the last one and v, the first one. Okay? And the cost of the solution is uh, sum. OK. Some of the edge weights of the traverse. OK. But uh, you know, this is not so important, because you already understand what is the problem. It's pretty easy. The sum of the, uh, ju just, you know, they just try to, you're trying to find the sequence of vertices. Sequence of vertices, which visits every vertex exactly once, and coming back to the original original position. Now, we are now introducing some important assumption. Okay. Now suppose that the given graph satisfies a triangular inequality. Triangular inequality that means for any triangle in the graph, for any triangle in the graph, A plus B is at least C. For any triangle in the graph, uh, you know, the, the triangle, uh, uh, triangular inequality uh, hold. That is an uh, assumption of assumption. Okay, this is, uh, this is quite natural assumption because, uh, of course, yes. If uh, we consider, for example, two, di two dimensional Euclid space. Okay, so in, in practice, when you, you consider application of this problem, then you know, this assumption is quite reasonable. This, uh, this assumption is not, uh, not too strong at all. Okay, then, then we can design good approximation algorithm. Oh, this problem is, of course, it's, uh, hard. This is a hard problem, yeah. exact solutions. It's a hard problem. Actually, it is NP complete. NP hard problem if we want exact solutions. But uh, if you are satisfied with the approximation, approximation, approximated solution, then we have a good algorithm. So, our goal is to prove that okay, 
So there's an algorithm whose approximation ratio is 2.0. I mean, this is quite nice algorithm, quite simple and very nice algorithm. Actually, um, there's another one. Actually, we can also prove that uh, uh, we have a approximation algorithm whose uh, ratio is at most 1.5 beta better than 2.0. And surprisingly, surprisingly, oh, the, oh yeah, this theorem is not, so, not very difficult at all. Not very difficult. If you visit any algorithm textbook, then not any, not any. Maybe a uh, good algorithm textbook, then probably you can cross. Yeah, you, you can come across uh, this, this, this algorithm. It's quite famous. And maybe, uh, you need a couple of hours to understand. <laughs> well, it's not, so, not that difficult, but you need some kind of preparation. preparation. But even so, uh, this algorithm is uh, quite uh, uh, readable. Okay? And surprisingly, this algorithm was found more than 40 years ago. 40 years ago. And still the best approximation ratio. And many, many people believe that the, the real true approximation ratio of this problem is less than 1.5. It's something like 1.3, 1.2. I don't remember the lower bound. There's also lower bound, 1.1 something. Yeah, 1.1 or 1.2 something. So many, many people believe that the true, the true approximation ratio for this algorithm is less than 1.5. But it's, it's, it has been open for more than 40 years. Yeah, so if, if you could prove, if you could find some good algorithm whose uh, ratio is strictly less than 1.5, then this is a big, 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 big news. Yeah, you can become, in, uh, you know, instantly, you can become a famous, famous person in this community. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have many, many such problems, you know. If you could once solve it, then you can be instantly a famous person in the world. Okay. Like Honda. <coughs> or maybe. Okay, I believe that uh, this, uh, this example satisfies uh, triangular equality. Uh, I'm not very sure, but probably, probably. Yeah, yeah this is an example which satisfies uh, triangular inequality. For example, you know, this triangle, 4 plus 2 is more than 3. This triangle, uh, this triangle, 8, 2, 7. 2, 2 plus 7 is more than 8. And this triangle, 7 plus 5 is more than 11. So probably, I, I, I'm pretty sure this example satisfies the triangular equality. OK. Now, The first step is to construct a minimum spanning tree 
What is the minimum spanning tree? Minimum spanning tree is a tree, tree which covers all nodes, which covers all nodes with the minimum cost. This is, this is easier. This is much, much easier. For example, I'll show you how to obtain minimum spanning tree in this, in this graph. In this graph. What you do is very simple. You know, just pick the cheapest edge. Just pick the cheapest edge first. Then, you know, the, again, you pick the cheapest edge. Uh, cheapest edge, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, uh, yes. The cheap, cheapest edge from, from, from this guy or this guy. Okay, in this case, the cheap, next che cheapest guy is this three. Okay, this three. So, you know, just pick the cheapest edge, which, uh, which coming out, which is comi coming out from, from the current current tree, from the current tree. Just you know, pick, the, pick the cheapest edge, all times. It's very greedy. Now the cheapest edge is a four, but you can't, you can't select this four, because you know, this, if you select this four, it's a, it's a cycle. You know, the, the, your answer must be a tree, must be a tree, no cycle at all, no cycle. The, in the, so in the case, this case, you, the ne your next choice is a four. And your next choice is five, I guess. Like this. You're done. This tree covers all, all vertices, all vertices. And the cost is minimum. Cost is minimum. The, mi uh, uh, you know, the, the minimum spanning tree is pretty easy, pretty easy. Just use a greedy algorithm. Just use a greedy algorithm. And that is correct. OK? Of course, you need a proof. But uh, I, I skip it uh, because it is, you know, it's, uh, again, it's, if you can, if you visit some some algorithm textbook, then you know they include this problem. So this is easy. Suppose that the cost of this spanning tree is t. Suppose that the cost of this spanning tree is t. Then you know that the cost, I'm sorry, the, uh, the optimal cost, the optimal cost of TSP is at least t. It's at least t. Why? Why? Because because so this is optimal TSP. So the optimal TSP, then just remove one edge. Just remove one edge. Then this is a what? This is spanning tree. Right? So if you remove one edge, from the opti optimal tour, then that becomes spanning tree. OK? That means the minimum spanning, the cost of minimum spanning tree is less than this, this cost. And that is, of course, smaller than, you know, smaller than the optimal cost of DSP. That's why the optimal DSP, the cost of the uh, uh, tree, the cost of optimal TSP is greater than the optimal of a spanning T, a minimum spanning T. Okay. Now, the next thing is to construct a 2T, 2T uh, TSP, TSP tour of, of cost 2 times T.
Suppose that this is a spanning tree, minimum spanning tree. You obtained. You obtained. Then construct uh, TSP tour. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not a TSP tour. Not a TSP tour. This is a 2T. This is a tour of cost 2T. That is OK, this is a tour, a tour. Um, this is not TSP tour, because it violates the rule of TSP tour. It visits, it visits, you know, the same, the same vertex more than twice, more than once. OK, just come back. This is a not good. This is not good. But, 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 from this tour, you can very easily construct. Okay. Now, from this tour, you can construct a TSP tour by shortcutting. By shortcutting. What is what do you mean by shortcutting? Okay. It's so pretty simple. So you start from a, from any any position. Okay. You can start from any position. For example, here. You can start now. Use this this tour. Then you know. Oh, no good. You come back, so then that you, you shortcut like this. Okay? You, you like this, you, you can come like this, but you can shortcut because it's not good to, to, to visit the same uh, vertex twice. So it's just shortcut. Then now you, you come here, but you know, it's not good. Then shortcut. Shortcut, right? Shortcut. OK? Now, it was here, and shortcut. Shortcut. Now, you go here, shortcut. Now, you go here, not good. Not good. No, yeah, this, this is not good. So, yeah. OK. OK? Just shortcut. And the so, you know the cost of uh, now What is what is the cost of this this red tour? What is the cost of this red tour? Oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Sorry. I'm very sorry. Here. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay? What is the cost of this red tour? So the, this uh, cost, cost of this red tour is at most the cost of black tour. Why? Because we assume triangular inequality. You know, this cost is at, at most this cost. Okay, this cost, this cost is at most this cost. Triangular inequality. Okay? So this red tour, red, is at most black. Black. The cost of black is at most flopped. Okay? 
Oh, here, I'm sorry, here. That means approximation ratio is at most two. Done. Done. As I said, there is a better rules, but this is a little bit more complicated, but not that, th not that more. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's a good idea to try to uh, visit some uh, algorithm textbook. To under to to understand you know to know this algorithm better algorithm. Okay, now <sighs> I have only fifteen minutes. Okay, we have a 1.5 algorithm, approximation algorithm, and 1.7 algorithm, 2.0 algorithm, and log n algorithm. The question is uh, Is there any approximation algorithm? With approximation ratio is less than, for example, 1.0, 1.5, something like a 1.0001, 1 .001, or something like a, uh, something like a, I don't know, uh, n, one minus epsilon, n to the one minus epsilon. Something like this. That is, that is true. That is true. We 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 have both this kind of very easy uh, problem, and this kind of very hard problem. In terms of approximation. Not uh, approximation is n n to the zero point nine nine. It's uh, very bad. It's very bad. Okay. We do we do have. We do have both types of problems. Very easy, easy one to approximate, and very hard one to approximate. Um, I'll show you this type. I'll show you this type. Um, I'm, I, I omit that type. I omit that type. But uh, you know that type is uh, pretty. Uh, there are many, many examples. Many, many examples. Just in a standard example. For example, just remember, uh, uh, I don't remember, it's, it's equal, uh, equal sum or equal? Yeah, but anyway, it's, it's, um, it's many, many you know, easy problems uh, have this property. I'll show you this, this example. Example four. Graphically, we are given graph. Okay, we are given graph, and your 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 task is to color to color all vertices, such that no neighboring two vertices got same color. For example, you color this vertex one, then this vertex cannot be colored by one. Okay. You can't give same color, same color to the neighboring two vertices. You need maybe two, three. 
this guy, you know, can't use a uh, one or two. And one, three, no. Two, three. Okay. So the uh, this is the uh, coloring. And this is a graph coloring problem. Very famous. Very famous problem. And uh, um, of course, the question, the question is, you know, that uh, uh, the minimum, minimum coloring. You need to, you need to, you need to find a coloring which is a minimum number of different colors. Okay. Now. Okay. So this is our last theorem today. So we're given our, uh, our instance is a graph G, but uh, we have a guarantee. We have a guarantee such that G is three colorable. Three colorable. That means we can color G with three different colors. That is a guarantee. That's the promise. Okay. The problem is uh, we, we have to find some legal coloring for G. Of course, you notice know, if it, it, it is guaranteed that G is three colorable, but we don't know how to color. Okay. And actually, this is an NP hard problem. NP hard problem. So this is very difficult to color graph G with with exactly three colors. So your, 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 task, your task is to color this graph G with the minimum number of colors. OK? And we have our reason such that uh, you need uh, lots, lots of colors, lots of lots of colors, almost a square root of n. You know, it's a, if you if you are opt, you know, if you are good, then you can find uh, three coloring, three coloring. But uh, you know, this algorithm can find a coloring which needs almost a square root of n colors. Very bad, very bad. Actually, we have a better better. But there's something like uh, I don't remember. Yeah, and and the 0 0.3 something, but uh, still polynomial, still polynomial. 
This is very bad. OK. Now I'll show you this algorithm. First, if g, the maximum degree of g is less than square root of n, then just color g with square root of n, max degree plus one color. Um, this is what? This is a uh, use greedy. Use greedy. That means. We look color one, two, three, and so on. D plus one from from left to right, then just use the first color available. For example, you know, use a okay. Use the first vertex, color one. The second vertex, greedy. Okay, so from left to right. We can't use E1, then you use two. Right? The next one, what? Greedy. You can use one. Okay, next one. You can use you can count use one, you can't use two, then three. This is greedy. This is greedy. Then it's pretty easy to, to, see, that, to see that you, you, you need at most d plus 1 colors. Why? Now this is your, your, your vertex, current vertex. Degree is 5, d. Degree is d. Now you look at the color from left to right. OK, you can't use 1. You can't use two. You can't use three. You know, just, uh, if the if the you know those 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 vertices use one through d, then you can use d plus one, or maybe some missing colors. You just use greedy. Good. Now, otherwise. Otherwise, that means the max degree is larger than square root of n, then you just choose. You just choose some vertex, which is the uh, maximum, which is the uh, largest degree. Which is the largest degree? Okay, then just you look at your the neighbors of that that vertex. The neighbors of that vertex. Then, of course, this is too colorful. This is too colorful. Why? Because you know you have a guarantee. That the whole graph is three colorable. If you use one, some color for this, then of course, you know the, all those things should be colored with two colors, right? Because the whole thing is three colorable. We have a guarantee. Then you know you just just find some two coloring of this uh, this of this vertex. Okay, two coloring is completely different from three coloring. Two coloring is easy. Two coloring is easy. Because, you know, this is one. Now the, 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 the 
the next, you know, the, the, this is two, should be two. And in this case, it's already, no, this is not two colorable. Okay, so we don't have such, such, such edge. Like this. Now it is an, you use one, then of course the, the, the neighboring edge should, 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 should have a color two. And the neighboring edge should have color one, and so on and so forth. And everything you know, goes deterministically. Deterministically, OK? So it is a one, then the next two thing is two, then next one, the next two, one, two, one, two. OK? So two coloring is pretty easy. So just, uh, just use, uh, you know, just find two coloring from for, for those vertices, then you can remove everything of this part. Then recourse, just recourse. OK, now you remove everything, then just recourse. Just recourse means, where this is color one, and color two and three, OK? Just recourse. Now this is, uh, again, you know, it is a many uh, big, 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 big uh, degree, vertex. And then again, you can color this vertex by one. Why? You can use one. Because it, uh, you already remove all vertices which are, which are adjacent to one. So you can use one. Now for this, you can use uh, four and five. And five, then this is a legal coloring. Maybe you know those two things might be might be uh, might be adjacent. So, but you, you, if you have five and four, four and five, then it's, it's legal. Should be legal. Okay. Uh, you know, it's at most. There are at most square root of square root, root of n times for the steps, because in each you know in each step you can leave at most at least square root of n uh, vertices, then it can last at most square root of n times. After that, you know the 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 remaining graph should be small. Should be small means the maximum degree should be less than square root of n. Then you can use that one. Okay. How many, how many, how many? How many colors? Two times square root of n. Because in each step, you need two colors. Uh, maybe three for the first first time, but two, 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 two. Okay, two times square root of n plus square root of n plus one. Yeah, this is almost. Almost three times square root of n. Okay. A very easy, very easy algorithm. But as I said, the current best algorithm, currently best algorithm, which is very complicated, very technical, but it still needs n to the 0 0.3. It's better than square root of n, but still polynomial. So that's what I meant. OK, this type of hard, there, there, there are this type, type of hard, hard problems. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is a very interesting point about approximation algorithms. We have a wide range, wide, wide, wide range of, uh, of the difficulty, different difficulties of the problem in terms of approximability. It's a very, very interesting. Yeah. I omitted uh, examples for this type of very easy 
problem, but uh, you know, just you can read some some textbooks. Okay, this is a typical approximation ratio like TSP, and uh, I've been working, and this is a kind of medium mediumly medium difficult, medium difficult, like set cover, and it's very difficult coloring. Okay, so we are now finished with the uh, with approximation algorithms, and next week we are going to another another new topic. Okay, so see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>